So welcome to my Xeno series collection video and I didn't even know I had a collection. It's a series I've been playing since it first came out with the original Xeno Gears and the series is unrelated in a lot of regards but I played all of these games and I really enjoy this series and I have a lot of things behind the scenes here that I want to show you guys. This is not a, a series review per se as much as it is looking at all the games and the merchandise I picked up over the years and it's really weird that I even have a collection. As I say, I just started playing the games. I started with the original Xenogears right here and this game was on the PlayStation 1. It blew our minds back in the day. It really did. It was dealing with a lot of things that were fascinating and the game had a lot of controversy when it came out that it was dealing with a lot of religious issues and they didn't want to, they were going to remove a lot of things from the game. They did remove a few things from the game, but we originally got the game on PS1. It's an RPG series. The entire series is an RPG series. The original game is a masterpiece. The second disc is a little bit, you know, a little bit unusual. They rushed it a little bit, but it is a masterpiece of a game. And a lot of people have asked me why I've never reviewed the game on the channel. And the reason why is, I don't think I can do it justice. The game, still, nearly 20 years later, is bigger than me. It's bigger than most games in its scope, ambition. It's incredible. It takes place over thousands of years and, oh my god, the wave existence. I mean, I could just go on and on. I, I just love the game. It is a 10 out of 10 game for me. And me and my friends loved it so much that we had to get the music soundtrack with it as well. And we bought this a little bit afterwards and the soundtrack alone is beyond classic. And I still listen to it to this day. I was listening to it about a week ago and I was like, I need to talk about Xenogears. Especially we're dealing with Xenogears being 20 years old now, which is amazing that it was that long ago. But the music still holds up to this day. And I picked this up a few years back just so I could have it in the collection. This was the strategy guide that came out for the PlayStation 1 game. And uh, if anybody doesn't kind of know, Xenogears deals with some very big concepts and has a lot of mecha in uh, the, the series as well. That's also a big uh, staple of it. But uh, I just want to show you the strategy guide. Now, the holy grail for Xenogears, the holy grail, there is one holy grail there's a translated PDF online that you can probably look up for free, but I bought the Japanese version of this, Xenogears Perfect Works. This is an explanation of what they wanted to do with the Xenogears series. It was going to be huge in scope. It was going to take place on multiple, multiple games, but they only came out with the first game. And let me just show you a little bit of this, just to show you get this. Is it, look at the explanations on how everything works. It's it's beyond a video game. This is why I never want to review it because I can't do this game justice. It's bigger than, as I say, all of us. It's it's quite ambitious, and I absolutely adore it. I adore it because it is ambitious, and I'm I'm an artist and I'm a, a writer, and I really enjoy creating and world building. They did universe building with this series, man. It was absolutely amazing. So anyways, that's just some of the stuff that I had for Xena Gears. Next up, that that ended and we didn't hear anything from Xena Gears again. There was no more Xena Gears games. There still isn't to this day. It's a Squaresoft only game. But some of the people that worked on this game went off to do, uh, you know, start Monolith Studios and they came up with this game. It's a spiritual successor. There's some small links to the original game and some big links as well, but it's its own thing, and that is Xeno Saga. Uh, this is the first game, and the one thing that I gotta say about this uh, second, you know, this game on the PlayStation 2, it was huge in scope as well. Huge in scope that there were so many cinematics. I'd honestly say that the game is 60% cinematics. 40% gameplay, I'm not taking anything away from it, but I remember putting it in and I'd watch the cinematics play and I'd be like, oh, okay, cool, it's gonna be a couple minutes. 20 minutes later, it, it was very, 
ambitious in that they want to tell a lot of stories. And I was very nervous going to the PS2 thinking, are video games all going to become just about cinematics and not about gameplay? This was a very big concern of mine. Uh, and they really kind of went overboard with the cinematics, but they were the most gorgeous thing you'd ever seen. Anyways, this is not a series review, but a really great game. And I got the strategy guide for the very first game. And this was brought out by Namco. So uh, Monolith was working with Namco to to fund this series of games. And, and they were very ambitious with this series. I know I'm using the word ambitious, but you can't talk about this series without saying that at all because they also created a second game and a third game. A lot of people like the second game. I'm not that much of a fan of. The third game brought it back, man. This game was un freaking believable. I, I adored the third game so much and I got a few things to show you with that. Showed you this. Here is the Xenosaga 2 strategy guide. We got things falling out of it. This was quite quite the guide. You would open it up like this and you get a soundtrack over there and then you slip this out and you get the guide itself. And really, this is the series of Cosmos. Uh, Cosmos. Uh, really, it's kind of all about her character and what is also going on throughout the universe, but you kind of are seeing the universe through her eyes, and it's really, really amazing. And uh, also, we got the strategy guide here for the third game. I'd honestly say out of the Xenosaga series, like for, for one to three, I'd say that the third game is the best in the series. I just, the combat was lightning fast, soundtrack was good. I just, I just really enjoyed the way the the combat system was flowing. The game flowed and it flowed really well. And when I came to the end of that game, I was like, ah, damn it, I'm gonna miss this. And if you pre-ordered it, I believe you got this, uh, this little art book here for this is for the third game. And look at some of the, I really like the uh, designs in the third game quite a lot. Really nice looking stuff there. Really nice looking stuff. Love the Xenosaga series and I've never talked about it in the show's history, which is really unusual. Then there was nothing. It was like, that was the end of the series. I know it was, it didn't do that well. I know the first game did really well, but the second and third game didn't catch on. Damn, go find the third game if you can. Really go and find the third game. Then, Nintendo got together with Monolith and they created this little game here, which for a lot of people was their first entry into a Xeno style of game, and that is Xenoblade Chronicles. And uh, this was on the Wii. And I really like this game uh, quite a lot. A lot of my friends absolutely adore it. I, I liked it, but I was like, oh my god, why, why is it... <laughs> only in 480 uh, resolution. That was the only thing that kind of was like bumming me out a lot. But the quest system, the ambition of this game, as I say, I'm coming back to that word ambition. Ambition in this game was absolutely over the top. Really great soundtrack. You can't argue with this. Really interesting combat. The action combat was really cool. And then on the new 3DS, we got Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. So you finally get this game in 3D on the new th uh, Nintendo 3DS and you needed the new Nintendo 3DS to play it uh, because it was a high powered game that wouldn't run on a regular 3DS which is too much fun. I really enjoyed this series quite a lot and it was also the beginning of a new Xeno series that I didn't even see coming. I'm like, wow, we got this. it's called Xenoblade now? Because remember, Xeno Gears, Xeno Saga, Xenoblade Chronicles now we're into. It was quite something else. And this is the game that I really want to talk about a little bit. And I don't think I got it. I talked about it in a new Game Stuff episode a long time ago, when it first originally came out. And that is Xenoblade Chronicles X, which was a very unusual game. I love this game. I really do. And I gotta admit, I never finished it. It was so big, so huge in scope, you're basically stranded on this alien planet and you've got to rebuild the city and uh, to save the last of humanity. 
It is crazy. You're exploring like an Avatar-esque world. Uh, eventually you get Mecha in it. And it's just so big in scope and it's weird. This game rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. The soundtrack is really bizarre. It's real, but to me, bizarre and in a really great, great way. And anyways, I didn't want to get into a whole uh, series review here, but I think this is a very underappreciated game on the Wii U. I'd like to see it come back out again on maybe the Nintendo Switch. I don't think so. I think we're just moving on forward now. But this was, this was just its own thing. This was its own thing where you just are, are on this weird alien world exploring and it's just so huge. It, it gave me the vibes of Fantasy Star again. That's what it was really reminding me of. I was like, Fantasy Star is back, but it's it's completely different. <laughs> I don't know why. It just reminded me of Fantasy Star quite a lot. And I got to show a few things as well. Here's the strategy guide, and I've never opened this up. I want to keep this sealed. This is a collector's item. This is one is a to me is a collector's item for sure. And here is. The limited edition of Xenoblade Chronicles X. Look at, just look at the design work. What a world to explore. There's not, a, there's not a lot of games that haunt me, but this game haunts me. It calls to me and says, come back, come back. But I was, I was quite a few hours in, and then one of my friends said to me, he's like, oh, I'm 150 hours and I'm still nowhere near the end. And I'm like, I don't have time to do 150 hours. You know, like, where do I get 150 hours? But this is a great uh, special edition. And again, one I definitely do not want to open at all. But underappreciated game. Wouldn't you say, for anybody who's out there who's finished this game, underappreciated game? I'd say so. And I am I only began the game. I only got, like, about 40 hours in. And I thought, oh, I, I should be at the end. And then I hear 150. I'm like, what? Oh, also, this I just pulled this out. I got this back in the day. I forget, I think I ordered it from EB Games and you just got this, this is the original Xenoblade here. You got this art book. I'm just gonna flip through. I don't wanna break the spine on this guy here. So, now, flash forward to now, we got a true Xenoblade Chronicles sequel called Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And here is the special edition. I did an unboxing of this back in the day. And this is a, a really beautiful game on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, look at this special edition, really great. And here is the controller. This is a, the limited edition controller. Unbelievable. This this game is really, really good. I, I really got a lot out of it. I like the world. I really like the characters. As I said, it reminded me of Skies of Arcadia in a lot of ways. I don't know, just the opening vibes of the game. But as you get into it, it got more and more technical. There's a lot more things to do. There was so much to this game. And it lives up to the rest of the series, which, again, let's bring it back, was so vast. This series has been so vast in trying to explore ideas and themes that are extraordinary. And 20 years later from the original Xena Gears, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the game. And I still don't know if I could ever do a, a, a really good review on it because it's so, it's so much bigger than me. A video game was bigger than me in scope and I really appreciate all of these games, how big in scope they all have been. And I've really enjoyed it. And as I say, all these three different series are, you know, very unrelated in a lot of ways, but they all kind of share the same Xeno theme, the same feeling of uh, ambition, as I said, to begin with. And what do you guys think of this series? I, I'm i absolutely blown away by it. It's like it's bigger than just being an RPG series. It's a lot more than that to me. And it's, I, I don't say this because I'm not a religious person, but this is a very religious kind of series to me. And I know one of my friends out there is laughing at me because because I always say that to do with some series. I'm like, this series is, is like religion, you know? And uh, Xeno, the Xeno series is like that to me. Absolutely. No pun intended as well to do with the very first game. So anyways, guys, until next time.